Without further ado, I'm going to introduce our speaker, uh, Stefo. Uh, he's an expert on the cloud, and he's going to talk about what that means for uh, entrepreneurs like us in the room. So let's hear it for Stefo. Just the I'm just kidding. I'm Stefo. I'm six feet. I'm a Virgo. Like long walks in the park and sushi. Come on, guys. Um, can we do a Christmas carol? No? No? Okay, just kidding. Come on, James. Uh, my name is Stefo Medikitis. I'm with a company called Cloud Strategies. Our website is here. There's about 20 of us at Cloud Strategies. We focus entirely on the cloud. That means there's nothing on premise at our headquarters in uh, New Jersey except for a router, to be frank. In our IT closet, we hang coats. Essentially, we are in the business of helping you take your on-premise data, especially around mail and collaboration, to Office 365. How many people are have used Exchange in a business environment before? Most everybody. Who has used Google Mail, Gmail, in a business environment? And how many people are still using Google for their corporate email? Awesome. These are the people I really want to talk to, uh, talk with now. Yes, James. So James managed servers, so he knows how what a pain in the backside managing servers is. Um, so thank you for coming. Anyway, I was at Microsoft for seven years. I focused entirely on services. Many of us at Cloud Strategies, about half of us came from Microsoft. We saw the potential for cloud computing. Really and truly, I mean, I, uh, back in the day I, when I was uh, an account manager for Microsoft in New York, I looked after a lot of large companies. And one of the things I loved about cloud and Office 365 is it, it brought some enterprise grade applications and services to smaller businesses that typically were, were financially, they sort of precluded them from getting into things like SharePoint and Exchange just due to price point. So with Office 365, one of the things, and I'll show you how much things cost, give you some of the different options that you have, what you'll see is that let small, medium businesses have all of the tools and applications that the big guys have, but with a simple <coughs> subscription price, a login and password. So the whole idea, I think, behind cloud computing, essentially, is you manage your business. You work on your core business. Let Microsoft handle your email and collaboration. And when I say collaboration, who knows what I'm really meaning behind collaboration? Anyone know what I mean? So basically, you're working on your ecosystem, on Right. What Microsoft tool do you think I'm talking about when I say collaboration? Yes, exactly. So, to give you an idea, just broad strokes, Office 365. How many people have heard of Office 365? Awesome. Office 365 is really a brand from Microsoft. Underneath that brand lies uh, Exchange Online, which I'll show you mine. SharePoint Online, which I'll show you mine. Um, there's Link Online, which is instant messaging, presence, and web conferencing. And now there's also Office Online. Great way for small businesses to get all of the tools at a really great price. So, I have my business cards up here. What, what, what I'll leave you with today, just to give you an idea, is a free trial of the service. So if you're using Gmail and say, hey, I love it, I'll, I'd like to take you on, let you, sh let you see Office 365 Exchange online, and let you make a decision on whether you like it better or not. Okay? Sound fair? Let's get into it. This is my exchange. This is Exchange Online. If, if, you, if you look at it, it looks like Exchange because it is. One of the things that Microsoft has done really well in Exchange Online 2010 is to have feature parity with the on-premise version. A very key point. Nobody wants to use Exchange Lite. Not unless they're using maybe a web browser, and even then they don't want to use that. So this is my exchange. This is how I use it. If it looks a lot like Exchange, it's because it is. 
and it's hosted at Microsoft Data Centers. Really and truly one of the benefits if you're thinking about how do I cost justify going to the cloud, I would say if you're, if you're using, say, Exchange 2007 or, gosh forbid, 2003, this is a great way to get to 2010 without having to spend the money on hardware and software. And 64-bit hardware is not cheap. Um, a great way to keep up uh, and have the latest and greatest. But what we're finding companies of all sizes, they're saying, hey, I've got three IT people. I've got one IT person. They're overworked. What do I do? And we say, let us handle your exchange. Let us handle your mail. Re 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 uh, reassign that person. Give them stuff that's more proactive and reactive than handling mail and issues with mail. Patches and updates and all that good stuff. Microsoft handles. So, as you can see here, you have all of the great tools, all the great enterprise tools that you might take for granted, frankly, because you use them every day, all day. So whether it's contacts or calendaring, um, all of these things are in Exchange Online. So all the things here on the left that you like so much are still in Exchange Online. Now, the Exchange Online mailbox through Office 365, does anyone know how much it costs per mailbox? Any ideas? It's $4 per user per month. So you know the math. If, if you're a company of five, it's $20 per, you, uh, per company for your company for the month. That's not Exchange Lite. That's a 25 gig mailbox. It has four front security anti spam antivirus. So it's a great way to get started if, if you've got people all over the map. Um, geographically dispersed, it's a great way to have everybody on the same platform um, for a very minimal cost. There is no extra fee. There's no startup fee. What my company does, if you have a lot of data, if you have more than five users, let's say, you might need help moving that data, migration of that data. We're experts at using the tools that help facilitate that. And we use tools from MigrationWiz, from Binary Tree. I'm not sure if you've heard of these companies, but we are experts at, at, at migrating data from your on-premise or hosted exchange right now, or hosted email, to exchange online. So, like I said, I mean, this is mine, this is how I use it, I use it every day, all day. To me, it's the most important collaboration tool that I use, um, and uh, like I said, it looks and feels just like what you're used to. One of the things that, that I like to kind of talk a little bit about is how it compares to Gmail, because in fairness, we're in their backyard, Google, okay? And um, I think they did a pretty good job coming out of, with Gmail and making it equate kind of to cloud computing. And in fact, Microsoft has really done a great job of taking their on-premise service to the cloud. Some of the things I just don't really care for personally in Gmail, I like the price point, it's free, okay? Not crazy about using it for an enterprise. And primarily because of security and privacy. I think they lack in those two things. If you go onto Gmail, for example, and you say to your buddy, hey, James, uh, let's go to Belize this summer, and you say, great, and the next time I turn on my machine and there's a banner ad for Belize, I'm not really cool with that in my email. So I think that Microsoft does a lot better job with, with, with security, with privacy, and, um, and I think it just has a lot more features and functionality. Things, things like being able to view people's calendars Certainly, it's hard to sort of hurt cats when you're trying to set a meeting up. It's a lot harder when you don't have visibility and the people that want to invite a calendar. Microsoft Office 365 will integrate calendars so that you're able to see people's calendars. Let me show you a little bit of what I mean. Actually, is Sam here still? Is your Sam left? All right, cool. Where is Sam? This could be the uh, Christmas Carol time. Anyway, um, let me show you my calendar here. I understand that. And then do me a favor and click on Mark Gordon for me up here. Mark Gordon up on the left. Down further. Right there. You're right there. No the left. Further left. Perfect. So Mark Gordon is my director of uh, 
architecture and strategy. And this to me is one of the most effective things, the ability, he's in Indianapolis in Indiana. So when I wake up and a customer calls me and says, I want to do a demo of Office 365, let's say that person might be a technical person, I need my technical support. I'm a, cons I'm a sales consultant. I, I have the ability to see Mark's calendar and then pretty well know because of my relationship with him that if I schedule him for 7 a.m. Pacific, he's going to be available to be able to meet my needs. Very, very effective. Not always easy to do in Google. And that is where I think, that's one of the things where I think that we're far superior. So I think that sometimes there's, there's price and cost and price and value. I think Microsoft has tremendous value at $4 per user per month. If you could go to... Uh, As I told you, Office 365 really is a brand. Underneath that brand, you've got your pillars of, of mail and collaboration. You have Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Link Online, and Office, okay? Microsoft, I think, historically, and I earned their right since I worked there nearly seven years, to say they always, they, they've not always made licensing easy for end users. I think we all can kind of shake our head and nod that it's not always been easy to, to license Microsoft services. I think with Office 365, they made it very, very flexible, and you can get started with as much or as little as you'd like. So they have um, hosted mail, a la carte, as I like to say. If you just want to start cloud computing with email, $4 per user per month, these are all the services that you get with it. it like I said, it's not email light. It's the full-blown email exchange. I'm going to skip the small business. The small business is pretty good if you'll never grow over 50 people. If your company will never grow over 50 people, 49 is the limit. Um, this small business plan one is pretty good for you. You're able to get um, a few of the services. The only challenge with this particular offering is you do not get 24 by 7 IT support. Kind of critical when you're talking about mail and different time zones. Also, um, like I said, you cannot scale past 49. These are the things, though, that I think are super, super cool. Microsoft very famous for bundling. So they'll take a few things, they'll put them together in a bundle, and then they'll charge less than if you added each of them up individually and added them up all together. So for example, if you are looking to do um, email and you want to do SharePoint in collaboration, and uh, we'll talk a little bit further on that one when I uh, show you mine, but if you want, say, an intranet or a, or a document repository, that kind of collaborative portal, that's what SharePoint is and more. And if you want Link, which is instant messaging, presence, and web conferencing, this E1 plan for $8 per user per month is hard to beat. Once again, five people at your company, $40 per month to have Exchange, SharePoint, Link online. No need for servers. There's no startup fee. If you have IT people at your company that have done data migration before, not hard to do. If you need our help, we can do that as well. And we have packages for small business, specifically for small business, that, um, that are cost effective. How many people are here, by the way, or work at companies that are over 100 people? Excellent. Cool. So those are, I'd certainly like to talk to you a little bit further about that because you guys are the ones that typically need migration help because your IT people, your IT staff are typically stretched as it is. And this one over here, this, this, um, this offering, which is called E3, it is Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Link Online, and Office Pro Plus, which is five copies of Office per user. So your, your pad, your laptop, your desktop, your, your, your desktop at home, you're licensed for all of those. A lot of people that have those needs around office are finding this a very cost-effective option at $20 per user per month. So these are some of your options. If you could go, uh, let me go, um, go back, and then hit um, this one right here, and hit the back arrow for, uh, I'm sorry, now go down again.
So just to give you an idea how to get into Office 365, it's web-based. So go to a portal. Microsoftonline.com. It's already there. Microsoft Online. It's, there's no dot. That's it. It's already there. Perfect. And go to go down to SharePoint Home. Oh. Uh, the third. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Visit SharePoint Home right here, sir. Perfect. This is how my company, Cloud Strategies, uses. SharePoint Online as soon as it comes up. This is our custom SharePoint Online site. So when we talked about what does collaboration really mean at Microsoft, it means SharePoint essentially, in many cases, okay? SharePoint gives you the ability to have an intranet. On an intranet, it's a great way, how many people have public folders and use the heck out of public folders? This is a great place to hang data that you would typically have in public folders if you were to move to Office 365, considering that Microsoft doesn't support public folders in Office 365. <laughs> that was a nice play for me to say they don't support public folders. Nonetheless, we are consultants. We work in contracts all day, every day, and we're geographically dispersed. So my technical hub, Indianapolis, Indiana, my boss is in Chicago, Illinois, and my headquarters is in Cedar Knolls, New Jersey. But somehow, SharePoint brings us all on the same page whenever we want to be. So for example, if I want to click on the ProQuest um, statement of work. I click on the statement of work. It lets me either read or edit depending on the permissions that I got, okay? And then the document opens up. Set the document, my boss, Warren Wolf, in Chicago can be working on this document along with me in San Jose, California, as if he's looking over my shoulder in the same conference room. But in real time, and in his comfort zone, in his home office. So we don't miss a beat considering that we're thousands of miles away. We're able to collaborate, we're able to um, edit, co-edit, co-author documents right there in our SharePoint portal. Other uses of SharePoint, just for, to give you an idea, very rudimentary uh, options when it comes to SharePoint. Human resources likes to leave, they like to hang, say for example, new hire documentation in SharePoint. If you have a form for um, time off, if you have a form for vacation, if you, have a, if you have a form for expenses, people put it on SharePoint, you fill it out, you send it in. So that's what SharePoint is. How many people have an intranet at their company that you can only typically see on the inside? Okay, this would be a great way to do this. If you have SharePoint online, I'd love to talk to you afterwards, or if you have SharePoint on-premise, excuse me, I'd love to talk to you after this, and tell you how you can migrate that data from on-prem to online. If you have a ton of customization on your SharePoint on-premise, then maybe online isn't the right option for you. This is a great way for small and medium businesses, however. Talking about what, we, what, what, I, what I brought up very early on in this presentation, it was, was sort of my motivation to come to Cloud Strategies and work for a consultant on a large company like Microsoft, is it gave people like you the ability to use these services with just a simple subscription. So no need to have a person that manages it full time, no need to pick up the servers and the software. It's just a simple license, like I showed you the different licensing options. So SharePoint Online, a great collaborative portal. Anybody have any questions about SharePoint Online? Yes, sir. Yes. So the third pillar of Office 365, I can't show it to you live here. It's called Link Online. Link, L-Y-N-C. Link includes um, uh, instant messaging. If you um, have integration with Active Directory, it gives you presence, which I think is absolutely the hottest thing. The ability to see when you're available. You might be in Singapore. It might be 6 a.m. for me, but I see when you get in the office. and I'm able to talk to you in real time. It's very impactful, especially when you're geographically dispersed. And it also includes what used to be called live meeting, which, which competes with WebEx, which competes with GoToMeeting. Um, and it gives you the ability from your communicator portal, from your communicator client, which is what I live in, the ability to see when you're available, chat with you, and then take that chat into a whole different level with a live meeting, where you're sharing desktops, sharing documents, and collaborating like that as well. So yes, it does, and that, that that's the package, that's the E1 package or the E3 package. 
the $8 or the $20 per user per month. You get link online. Now the limitations is you can have up to 250 people in your link meeting. So if you need anything larger than that, there are other options. But typically what people have found is that their meetings have more than five people in there. Right. So, yes, sir. Yes. Right, that's a good question. So the question is, Gmail is free, why should he have to pay for Exchange Online? So that's an excellent question. I think that, that there's a couple of things. We believe that Exchange Online has far more feature and functionality than Gmail. We also believe that when it comes to things like calendaring, like I showed you, it's a bit kludgy. Okay? The other thing that's very impactful, we believe, is that Google is not private or secure. Even though you can, in fact, turn on a security setting, it is not as secure as Microsoft Online. So security, privacy, functionality, that's why. If you've ever used Exchange in a business setting, use Gmail in that same business setting and tell me that there won't be hell to pay from your end users. They will not like it. Okay, if you're used to using it, then, then they might like it. If, if, it's a, if it's a money thing, if, if you have five people and you don't want to spend any money on email, then maybe that's a good option. Yes. No, it will be yoururl.com. Yeah, what it does is we just redirect the, we redirect the MX record to Microsoft. Okay, but you don't have to change your URL. You could host your website with GoDaddy. There you go. Yes. 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 No. No, they need to have the client though. They need to download a client. And the first time they the first time is the last time they have to do that. That can be a little tricky though to give you an idea. So if you're if you're meeting with somebody for the first time, you don't you want to make sure that you meet a little bit early so they can download the client so your meeting starts on time. That can be frustrating. Void. So so with Link Online, okay, with Link Online, who asked the question about? With Link Online, there's also the ability to do voice over IP. And video, okay, point to point. Yes. If you have five people that need email, okay. five people. Right, five customers don't need. You don't need a license for customers. Yes. Um, as admin, can I uh, archive the folders to local storage? Yeah. Or they're all going to stay in the cloud. They're all going to stay in the cloud. No local storage. No. No. All that, the archiving is going to be on the blockchain. It will be in the cloud. Correct. There's a 25 gig mailbox with each license. A lot of people think that that's enough and kind of like an archive. Then there's also archiving for things like compliance and for. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, E-discovery. Thank you very much, James. So those types of things, Microsoft has a slightly different license. It's eight dollars per user per month. It has an unlimited archive. So it's Exchange Online with the unlimited archive, and the archive is great for compliance and E-discovery. Does that make sense? What's the yeah? What? But some of the requirements you want to have the archives on the local storage. Right. Okay. We, there are a couple of other vendors that have archiving. It depends on your specific needs. I'll take it offline with you and we'll talk about it further. Any questions or comments about SharePoint Online? No, sir. So let's get, let's let's focus on this slide right here. You're right, you're right on, Sam. So this allows you to purchase. Say this this option here, which is E1. It includes Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and Link Online for $8 per user per month. All you need is, is to pay for it and you get a subscription. A login and password gives you, and, and a browser gives you the ability to get into these things like I showed you online just a second ago. So no need for hardware, no need to buy individual software. This is just a gift that Sam is personally giving away at the end of this if you need a new copy of Office. 
So yeah, I mean, your question is excellent though. I mean, frankly, when you say, why should I buy it if it's free at Google? That's a great question. I think that the answer is that it's a far better email platform, a far better, people don't necessarily like Google Apps and they love SharePoint. We'll help you make SharePoint easy. Google Apps is a, is a bear. Questions? Awesome. Any questions about licensing? We think that Microsoft's made a really good, uh, giving you definitely some, some options here to get started. You can walk with just uh, Exchange Online. SharePoint Online is also standalone. You can purchase it uh, a la carte, if you will, and then there are the bundles. Okay, yes, sir. Yes. You can, yes, but you can't have them in this plan. You can't mix and match this plan. But you can mix and match this plan with this plan and this plan. The small business package might be very good for some of you small business folks, but it doesn't play well with others, and you can't use customer support, and it only scales to 49 people. So those are the limitations. That's correct. So the, the, the question is, can you mix and match the licensing? And the answer is yes. You can have some of your information workers say, some of, maybe it's the back of the house folks are using a smaller license than say some of your, maybe it's your executives or whatever it is, your information workers that are using this. So yes, you can mix and match. One of the things I want to do after this presentation, if you'd like, I have my business cards. We've been doing it for a few years at Cloud Strategies. We're experts at moving people to the cloud. We've done over 300 deployments. We're a Microsoft Gold Certified Partner and we're a go-to partner here in the Bay Area. And I'm your local guy. And we've done this a whole bunch. We know the obstacles, the gotchas, all of those things in migrating mail and data. And so we'd be happy to help you. Another great thing that Microsoft does is they offer a free trial. So that's what I want to leave you with. I, it's holiday time, I want to give you something. And what I'm going to give you is a link to try Exchange or to try Office 365. It includes 25 licenses. It includes all three of the services, Exchange, SharePoint, and Link. Um, and it's a 30-day trial. There's no obligation. You don't put your credit card in. There's nothing like that. So my feeling is try it. If you've used Google, please try it. And then tell me if I'm right. Tell me if it's better. If you like the experience, consider it. If you don't, you're not paying for Google anyway. I'm sorry? 30 day trial for free, yeah. So if you want to do the trial, come to me. I'm happy to send you a link for that tonight. Yes, sir. Cross platform. So you can use Chrome and you can use or Firefox and Safari and all that. Yeah, we have to play well with others. We know there are Mac users, a lot of creative types. So, so um, there are limitations to the other hosted emails. There are limitations as far as size goes. 25 is a big mailbox. So we haven't really typically seen that as an issue. If people have an issue, then do the archiving option. Plan two for Exchange Online is unlimited archiving. Is this the Hotmail? So that's a great question. He asked, is this like Hotmail? Uh, I almost, it's almost like I planted you here to ask that question, so thank you very much. You're Mark, right? Thank you for asking that, Mark, because absolutely not. Microsoft does not ask you to use Hotmail. <laughs> Mark can surprise you, damn right. Mark can surprise you. It's a free trial to Office 365. <laughs> okay, Step Mark. Just stop there and do a quick raffle. Yeah, why not? We'll do a quick raffle here. Well, hold on a second, I'm almost done. Okay, so, um, what was your question? <laughs> So, so hell no is my answer to that. So essentially, Microsoft isn't, this is a great question though. Google is asking you to use Gmail for your enterprise mail. Microsoft is not asking you to use Hotmail for their mail. Thank you, Mark. Because absolutely not. Hotmail and Gmail are the same. Exchange and Gmail are not the same. So Microsoft is not asking you to use Hotmail. They're not asking you to use a consumer grade email platform to do the things that you need to do. I mean, if you took away 
anybody who raised their hand that has, a, has over 100 people at their company, you take away the ability to see shared mailbox, or shared calendars, and all hell will break loose. I'll guarantee that. Right, Peter? Exactly. Right, thanks, Peter. <laughs> I planted Peter. Anyway. You can, tram you, can, you can migrate any mail to Office 365, correct. What Cloud Strategies can help you do is actually migrate them. They'll give you strategy, give you the tools, actually do that if you don't have an IT department. If you have five people, we're gonna help you do it yourself. If you have 50 people, we're gonna tell you why you should have professionals do it. Right, so it's gonna be whatever the name of your company is. It's gonna be Rob Deep at Cisco.com. Do you work at Cisco? No, I didn't think so. Um, awesome. Okay, so I'm done. Thank you so much for sticking around. Happy holidays. If you want to see the free trial and do that, come and see me. I'm happy to do. I'm happy to help you get that free trial. Um, if you have questions, corner me in the corner here. I can't get out. And um, we're going to give a raffle away. Thank you for your attention. Happy holidays. And uh, I hope to see you on Office 365. Thanks a lot.